are legends in basketball so famous you know them by one name, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. And then there is a legend whose status is so iconic you know him by one letter, K, as in Coach K. For 42 seasons, Mike Krzyzewski served as the head coach for the Duke Blue Devils. He won 1,129 games at Duke, including five national championships before retiring. I sat down with him to talk about life, coaching wisdom, and what is more important than winning. It's a pretty cool view, and, you know, all the banners and... That's all your national championships. The five, yeah, and then Final Fours and ACC championships. You're often described by people in profiles of you as the son of a cleaning woman and an elevator operator. But I don't think that's how you would describe your parents. No, my parents were the basis of who me and my brother became. They taught us the dignity of work. You know, I even tell my teams for years, I want you to be as tough as your mother. And just think about your mother. Was there ever a day that she didn't show up? Did you ever see her sick? Did you ever see her tired? I never saw my mom sick or tired. I saw her every day doing everything that she could possibly do to make it nice for me and my brother Bill. I didn't appreciate it until later in life. And my dad died when I was a senior at West Point. He didn't go by the name Krzyzewski, he went by the name Cross because he was always afraid of losing his job because there was a lot of ethnic discrimination at that time. I didn't realize all the things that my parents gave up, gave up, hid. Your parents didn't even want you guys to learn to speak Polish. Polish, right. Why? And I didn't find out this until later. They didn't want us to have an accent because they were afraid, again, during that time, somebody with a vowel at the end of their name may have been looked at differently. They were concerned. They were trying to protect you. They were trying to protect me and my brother. So much so it wasn't on his tombstone until... Yeah. He was in World War II as William Cross. And so when he died, and we, you know, low-income family, the government provides a tombstone that said Cross. And uh, we weren't able to change that until my mom passed. And then my brother and I made sure it said Krzyzewski. You know, I was fortunate to be inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 2001. And one of the parts of the speech, and probably the most emotional for me, was I said, I wish my mom and dad were here tonight. I'm going to start crying. Uh, to see a Krzyzewski going to the Hall of Fame. It was emotional then, it's emotional now because I recognize just the, the life they led to make sure me and Bill would be taken care of. Amazing. How much of what you've done and how you've led and carried on this name so proudly? It's so famous. I just walked in the Krzyzewski Center. <laughs> they couldn't find another name for it, so they, you know, they put one that no one could pronounce. I love this picture. Yeah, that's, uh, you well, can tell she's proud. Proud. I've been married 53 years to Mickey, and we knew that it was going to be a partnership. I call it two is better than one if two can act as one. And we were able to act as one. That's my family. Whenever we played in the Olympics, we brought everybody. You did. You yeah. did a lot of it all together. Yeah. They have three daughters. They hold you down They, they have. Whatever humility I did not have, they tried to interject in me <laughs> over and over. So when there used to be family dinners yeah. and people would eat together, uh, and I'd be sitting at a table with my four girls and, and we're playing Carolina or we Maryland or whatever, and we just won a big game. And we're talking and nothing is said. About your win. Or about the game. My <laughs> wife did a great thing, Poppy. When all my girls were growing up, we never had anything basketball in the house. The players would come over at times, but there weren't trophies, pictures. There was no shrine to no. Coach K in your house. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> no shrine. And and there shouldn't be, you know. Uh, well, there uh, are in some people's houses. Yeah, now, because it's just me and Mickey and our dog, Coach. There is a shrine? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm in a basement office. Well, the lower level boss. Uh, yeah. And I can put anything I want in there. So, uh, 
whenever I need my ego boost, I go down there and start okay. looking and say, man, you were really good. No, I don't do that. Do you ever come stand here alone? I do. Usually, uh, not a lot, but later at night when all the lights are out and there might be just a little bit on the national championship banners or whatever, you walk in and you feel like you're in a field of dreams. This is your field of dreams. Yeah, where you feel like I better get out of here because the basketball gods are going to play pickup here in a little <laughs> bit. There are stars, there are star players, but we've seen in college basketball, in the NBA, that when you just put a bunch of stars together, it often doesn't work. You heard that expression, leave your egos at the door. I hate that expression. You do? I hate it. Bring your ego? Bring everything you got. Bring who you are. Why wouldn't you bring, why would you leave something you are? To make room for others? No, no, we should make the room bigger. You know, you're not confined by the room. And when you bring all the ego, egos in, put them under one umbrella. That's what we did for you. And it was said USA on it. And then you develop uh, common ground. Quick, you know, a quick story? Yeah, okay, I Jason, want all the stories. Jason Kidd, first practice, our captain, Hall of Famer, leading a fast break drill. Dwayne Wade's in one lane, LeBron's in another, and the ball's going everywhere. So I bring them together, like I know we can't play like this. And before I say anything, Jay Kidd says, Coach, I'll tone it down. And immediately, Kobe, LeBron, Dwayne said, no, 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 we've never played with you with a talent like you. We'll adapt to you. Really? Yes. It was one of the great moments in my coaching career where I saw talent say, come on, talent, give me more. Yeah. It's like the piano player telling the sax player, come on, go, I can play the piano better. You know, singer, you know, and all of a sudden, if you can get everyone playing with all their talent, why wouldn't you want talent to maximize? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and, and it doesn't mean you have to give up talent to maximize. And if all that works together, wow. How many presidents have you met? Yeah. All of them all in of your them. lifetime? Yeah, the wow. who were in when we won. Yeah. And uh, 41, President Bush became a close friend. This is you it? and Kobe. Yeah, this is U.S. Thanks for all the golden moments. Mm. This is a, a great book for me because each player uh, gave their quote. So can we read what LeBron said about yeah, you? Yeah. He allows us to play the game of basketball and just go out there and have fun, but at the same time he wants us to be perfect. We should expect perfection and that is what he is about. We like that, we like that kind of challenge. Yeah. Read the last line Kobe said about you. Coach K is one of the best coaches of all time, period, no question about it. One of the things that I've learned about you is how hard you are on yourself. And that there have been moments when you'll actually, you've looked in the mirror over your career and cursed yourself out. We're all better if we're held accountable, you know, and how you hold players accountable along the years change, but you still have to hold them accountable. You've been tough on them, very. Yeah. Well, you hold them accountable. And sometimes, there's nobody that holds the leader accountable. It's on you, it's I did it, you know, I need to change. And it was always not about winning and losing for me, it was about being worthy of winning.